wartime cake is this amazing cake that is simply magical. No milk, no eggs, no butter, no problem. You can still have this delicious tasting cake that is moist and reminds you of a brownie. It has this nice glaze on it that drips off and seeps into the cake, which gives it this extra layer of special flavor. Here are the ingredients, but don't worry, I'll include a link below that will give you a full written recipe and more details about this cake. Preheat your oven to 350 or 180 degrees Celsius. What I have is a nine inch pan and I have greased and I've lined it with parchment paper. You can also use wax paper, that's 23 centimeters. You can also use a eight inch pan or a 20 centimeter pan. In a large bowl, I have one and a half cups of flour, 225 grams. To this, I'm adding one quarter cup of cocoa powder, 20 grams, one teaspoon of baking soda, six grams, one half teaspoon of salt, 2.5 grams, and finally, three quarters of a cup of sugar, 150 grams. Now I've seen this recipe anywhere from a half a cup of sugar to one cup of sugar. Traditionally, it was one half cup usually, and I found that adding just a little bit more it makes it great. I found the ones with the one cup of sugar is just a little too much, but some people really love their sugar. So if you love sugar, feel free to throw in that whole cup of sugar, which would be 200 grams. Now you want to mix this. Ideally, you would sift it, but if you don't have a sifter, you can do what I'm doing here and just break up the lumps of the cocoa and stir it well until it's combined thoroughly. Once you do that, you're going to set it aside and you're going to get your wet ingredients. We start out with one cup of water, 240 milliliters. To that, we're going to add in one third of a cup of oil, which is 80 milliliters. And the recipe originally said one tablespoon of vinegar, which is 15 milliliters. Now the next step is completely optional. You can add in a teaspoon of vanilla, five milliliters. I'm eyeballing it here and I'm probably got a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, it doesn't really matter. It's not that precise of a recipe, so feel free to put in a lot of vanilla if you love it. Now all you need to do is stir this until it is just well combined. You're looking for a brownie type consistency. You don't want to overmix this, and that's why I like to do this by hand. A mixer, you can overmix it within just a few seconds. By hand, it's really difficult to overmix. And as I am mixing it, I'm looking for any pockets of flour or cocoa powder that isn't combined. Once that is all combined, I'm gonna pour it into this pan and that is it. I was blessed to be raised by my grandparents, well co-raised, and also I got to know my grandfather that was my great-grandfather on my dad's side and my great-grandmother. And I got to learn a lot of stories about frugality because of the depression, prohibition, and the wars. So this cake came about, it's sometimes called the depression cake, but it came about around World War II is what I was told. And I could be completely wrong about that. And that's sorry if I am, but it was basically a necessity cake because eggs, milk, butter, all were rationed. Even sugar was rationed. That's why the original recipe only has a half a cup of sugar and honestly I prefer it that way but I know a lot of people don't like things that are less sweet they like more sweet and so I up the sugar a little bit now you just scrape this into the bowl like I'm doing and you try to level it out the best you can if you don't it's okay um, expect cracks in this cake where there is no eggs or butter to give support and structure and that's fine that actually helps with the glaze especially if you leave it in the pan which is traditionally the thing to do but I'm going to remove it from the pan so you can see it better. Bake it from 25 to 35 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the center like this comes out clean. If you see any residue, just pop it in a little bit more. Do it a minute at a time because you don't want to over bake this. I'm showing you a quick hack here. You can use that toothpick to run around the sides of your pan and get the cake loose without scratching up your pan. This is much better than using a metal utensil, especially if you're using a non-stick pan. I'm using aluminum pan, but I still don't like scratches on my bakeware if I can prevent it because it can affect the bake over time. You want to turn this upside down if you're removing it from the cake pan or leave it in if you're not. Now look how cleanly this comes out because of the extra insurance of that wax paper or parchment paper. Now you just want to pull it off and set it aside while you make your glaze.
This glaze is very simple to do. You just need one cup of powdered sugar, 120 grams. You need one tablespoon of cocoa powder, five grams. And you wanna use anywhere between one to three tablespoons of water, 15 to 45 milliliters. If you're not sure how thick you want it, go one teaspoon at a time. You can have it very thick or you can have it very thin. I'm gonna show you how it's traditionally done. It's very thin batter. So I'm using the full three tablespoons of water and it's gonna be very runny. What happens is this glaze will seep into the cake and make it very moist, very brownie tasting like, and it really brings out the flavor. Now again, on a special occasion, they would put coffee in here instead of the water, which enhances the flavor of the chocolate, and the coffee just has that nice hint of an undertone to it. So I'll leave that up to you if you wanna put some coffee in. If you do decide to use coffee, I am talking about the actual drink, not coffee grounds. Let's make that clear. Coffee, not coffee grounds. And as you can see, this is very drippy, very runny. It's perfect. Now we gotta go and get that cake again. The cake should be cooled about 10 minutes now and you actually want it kind of warm because you want it to really absorb this well. So you have two options. You can drizzle it on like this and this takes a long time or you can do it my method. Just dump it on until you see it go about halfway and then you stop. And then you take your spoon and you spread it out to the edges. If it drips a little bit onto the counter, don't worry. It's easy to clean up. If you like, you could put a paper towel or a plate underneath this to catch up the excess. But I found it's just as easy to just wipe off the counter after you're done because you're cleaning the counter, hopefully, after you're done anyway because you should always have clean work surfaces as much as possible. Okay, after you get it all spread out, you repeat the process of dumping it, waiting till it hits about the midpoint, and you continue until you're completely out of glaze. You want to do this slowly as opposed to really fast because if you do it too fast, it'll just all pour out on the sides and that's kind of pointless. You want this to really seep into the cake. When you cut into it, you'll actually see this cake have some of the glaze inside. And because this cake is very prone to cracking, use that to your advantage. The cracks will absorb the glaze and it will be even more wonderfully delicious. And as you'll see soon, I cracked it when I moved it onto a plate. It's okay that that happened because it actually ended up being even more special. This is why typically they left the cake in the pan where it's just so fragile, it's prone to cracking, but that's okay, it's beautiful. It tastes wonderful and the crack actually made the glaze seep into the cake even more, which just makes it even more special. I hope you all like this cake recipe. Please visit us at jacksonstaub.com for more recipes like this. And if you liked it, that's wonderful. Let me know. If you didn't, I'm really sorry. That's how it goes on YouTube. Sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't. Happy baking.